o'clock on a Wednesday, and this is the Wizard Product Review. I'm Dave. I'm Craig. <laughs> Should we get it off the sticks, John? Yeah. Let's get it off the sticks. Uh, it is a card trick, but hard. It's it's a good one. Oh, yeah. All the cards out of the box. I will, just for the sake of magicians as well, uh, but you wouldn't normally labour this point, but I'll just show you there's nothing inside the box as well. But just for just for magicians. Yeah. Um, cards all different. I'll and it is a regular through. deck, by the way. Yeah, regular deck in use if you wanted to, mm -hmm. kind of, for, yeah. For so, studio. So, what's that? Uh, from a shuffled deck in use. Oh, right, so, okay. No whatever. worries. Uh, I'll flick through and say stop. Stop. So we're not going to use this card because we can see it. You take the oh, one below Dave, it. You love the classics, don't you? It's great. It's great. So uh, if you want to show that card to the camera, Craig. Got it. Awesome. Say stop. Stop. Put it back. Yep. Brilliant. Now, <laughs> shuffle the cards. <laughs> Give the cards a shuffle. And what I want you to do is uh, make your mind go a complete blank. That was quick. Whee. Nice. And I'm going to try and uh, draw what is exactly inside your mind right now. But I'm really? going to draw it on the uh, outside of the card case. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll draw on there. And uh, let me just start off this drawing. So How's that looking so far? Can you see that, John? Oh, you're looking good. Reflecting looking good. in the light there. Just got a, we've got a window behind the camera, so I'm trying to make sure it doesn't reflect. Let me just draw this. I'm going to draw this card. David Penn showing that he's got other skills other than magic. Tony Hart, my hero. And I used to like more. I'm going to put there three of hearts. The three of hearts. Brilliant. Yeah, not my card. It's good. He only got the script earlier. No, that's not <laughs> that's not your card, Craig. Yeah. Uh, I didn't say it was your card. That's the front card of an entire deck of cards. Ooh, Martin Lewis, bless you, can cut off. There's the rest of the deck, just there. And uh, can you name any number between 1 and 52? 12. 12. And your card is the 12th card from the top of the deck. Brilliant. Prove it. Awesome. It's brilliant, isn't it? Let's just make sure. Can you see that, John? Yeah. That's all right there. Name your card. Four of diamonds. Now, there's a classic trick in Magic. It's called the rising card. And remember, that's a deck of cards right there. And if I click, you'll see your card start to rise. And if I click again, it's risen a little bit more. And if I just shake the deck... That looks awesome. Your card, the four of diamonds, rises straight out of the deck of cards. That's the one. That looks awesome. The amazing thing, though, is that this is just an illusion. You see, it's not real. There's no moving parts or anything. In fact, if I just rub it away, it never even existed. That's great. That's just really good. And that is offset. And that's just one of the tricks you can actually do with yeah, it. Yeah, you can do so much with this. You can literally show a pack of cards as being completely uh, normal and you can have writing just appear in the middle with a shake. Yeah. Uh, so you could you could do a book test with it. I mean, you could easily do some yep. sort of book test. You could say, Words, think of three of the books, boom. There's a version as well, uh, which uh, I know Sean liked when I showed it to Sean, which was to have two decks at the bottom. Okay. And you have to, so you can do it on two separate people and you okay. draw two packs of cards and two cards rise at the same time very nice exactly the same what? thing you can rub it off at the end this is what i love about this guys from a worker's point of view the deck inside is ungimmicked so it's just a regular pack of yeah. uh, playing cards the box appears ungimmicked um it's an instant reset so once you've done this trick you walk over to your next table you can do it again yeah if you want to change the revelation so you want to change the card or you want to change the 10 seconds whatever 10 seconds at the absolute most 10 yeah. seconds and you can change it into whatever else you want to yeah. so you can within 10 or you can go to the next table and do the same card again but it's it the, that's it that's all you carry around with you the box if you don't want to do this trick you just put the box down to one side it 
it's a box. You take, you do your ambitious card or whatever. You put the cards away. You put it back in your pocket. It's not like it's a gimmick that you have to put down on the table. It's just a normal pack of cards. But if you want to go into this, you can at any time. But because of the versatility of the gimmick, you can lead into it. You could do it at the end of a series of card routines. Uh, you could do it at the end of multiple selections routines. You yeah. can have a multiple selection. Of you work very one. well on a on a screen as part yeah, of a big projection show. TV, yeah, you could do it really well on that. But it looks completely close up. It looks organic. You've not got all these bigger set up props no. and I think these one off moments are absolutely fantastic I, I agree I love it I think it's ingenious it's very versatile but I would only ever use the rising one I think just making something appear on there when it's capable of so much more so much slower controlled visual magic I think is a bit of a cop out yeah, I agree. when you can see something visually changing slowly just, and then at the end how of it, excited he is He's when you just, just shut it up when you just walk rub it off it's great well you've got to rein me in that's what you've got okay. to do you say. okay shut up what are you giving it i'm giving it worker of the week you oh, too yeah definitely worker obviously of the week. we're giving it worker of the week we've spoken about it i'm giving this i want to give it a hundred percent because i know two mean. places straight away where i'm going to use this two places something a project in the future and a way to use it Man, right now. Screw that. I know exactly where I'm going to use it. Every single gig. I mean, this is something that you can have with you and you're ready to do at a moment's notice and it's killer and it's the sort of thing that people will not have seen before. You know, like you go and do a card trick and people go, oh, I know that one. No, they're, gonna, they're never going to have seen this before. This is yep. absolutely genius. I'm giving it 99%. Finally on this show, Split Second by Nicholas Lawrence, the guy with On Off and... Uh... What was the Space other one? Shifter. Space Shifter. Awesome. I've since tried that at an event. Have you tried it, John? I've played with it at the weekend, yeah. And have you tried the trick out? I have been. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I know you and your wife have been arguing. I know, but it's all right. It's fine. So, <laughs> right. So, uh, can you synopsize Split Second? Good. <laughs> I really like it. No, no um, the effect. What <laughs> happens? He okay. busts out his wallet, doesn't he? He takes out his wallet and he pulls out of his wallet a uh, dollar bill. Yeah. And obviously he just shows the dollar bill. And then as he does a turny move in a split second, in a split se in a split second, yeah. the dollar bill, bam! It's turned into a deck of cards. How good does it look? Really good. It looks awesome. It looks amazing. It looks really, really good. Multiple live performances on the DVD. Oh, it's literally like yeah. he comes out of his pocket with his wallet, he opens the wallet and then takes the note out. Mm. And you immediately do the change it's, it's kind of a, for the uh, for the card case. Mm. It's kind of like a bowling ball production in that way because you could have a very thin wallet as well and take it out, take the note out, and then it visually change. Obviously, it's not the only trick you would perform. You would then go into a card routine. Yeah. You get gimmicks in the box. There's uh, we've there's blue ones available. The reds are in blue, short yeah. supply. Is that yeah, right, John? The reds are going to be um, back in. They're coming, but they're on back order at the moment. But uh, the actual effect, it's another winner from Nicholas Lawrence. There's really not much more to say than that. The DVD is handled very, very well. Herman's on this one. You like Herman, don't you? I do you? like Herman. I Chris, like Sandfines. Chris is yeah. in it in his beach wear. <laughs> He's in his beach on the beach. Hi, He's I'm very, Chris with I'm all cool. his shirt blowing open like Copperfield from, <laughs> Copperfield from the Bermuda Special. <laughs> it's, uh... but it's, it's great. I, I love the effect. The, the effect of Chris or the trick? Bit of both. Bit of both. <laughs> she's on Twitter. She's the one with the blue Chris, blue blue tick Chris. No, it was the Get beach in wear. touch. I just want to be on the beach. With Chris. <laughs> Bit of magic happening today on the Wizard Product if Review. Not no, the beach. <laughs> it's uh, it was it's a great project. It took me by surprise. So I thought this is going to be a little bit obvious, but actually when you see it. You see how it plays out, that you can in fact take the bill out of your wallet and change it. It will work with a £5 note, but there is stuff on there as well where you can adapt pretty much any note for different objects like gum. But the best effect is with the, uh, the £5 note changing into the deck of cards. And it looks really, really it look, good. It does look really good. And you good. won't have to change a £5 note too much. And, yeah, you might ruin a £5 note while you were setting it up, but yeah, it's, it's worth, worth it. it. It it's is worth, worth it. it. Yeah. It's not an expensive project. I mean, the only one thing I'd say, as a, as a girl... Um, as a girl, As a girl. Eh? Yeah, no, we, we don't carry wallets. Oh, right, yeah. So, for me, I'd have to... But girls don't matter, do they, in the magic world? Maybe 
do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a thing. It's a thing. Like, with wallet tricks, you don't carry it. You're just trying to make right. a chat. You're just trying to get the comments. Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think so how would you thing. do? Surely if you were a creative magician, to... Jazz, you'd be able to solve this problem. How are you going to do it? I'd get a purse that works the same way as a wallet. Well, there you go. <laughs> it wasn't even Easy. worth mentioning it, was it, John? I'll have to find one. Just wanted to get it in that I'm a girl in the magic world, no, monopolised by men. No, I don't think it matters. You've got a chip on your no, shoulder really or something about matter. this. No, it really doesn't matter. See, this is the thing. I don't think it makes a difference whether you're a girl or a guy or whatever gender you want to call yourself. It's, it's what you do and how you present it. So it's about personality, not plumbing. The fact I'm a girl doesn't really make any difference, apart from the fact I can get away with doing maybe more feminine tricks. But as a whole, I don't think it really matters. I think a lot of weight Still is put on something that shouldn't be. Still yeah. a master of magic, whatever Indeed. happens. That's awesome. Indeed. Jazz, thank you very much for joining us. How much are you going to give split second before you go? I'm going to give it 94. 94%. I'm going to give it 93%. Woo! A little bit less because I didn't like Chris in his beach wear. I'm just jealous. But He's that's... on the beach. Yeah, I'm just jealous of Chris, full stop. That's it, really. He's young, good-looking. I hate his guts. That's it this week for the Wizard product review. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Jazz Vegas, Bye. the star of Killer Magic. Me and John will make all that applause between us. Try and make it sound like Steve Wright in the afternoon. Occasionally, something finds its way into the uh, Wizard product review that has kind of took our interest. A lot yeah. of people are talking about it. And as a result, and it is something we're going to do more on the Wizard product review, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're, we're actually, not going to be stocking this at we're, the moment. we're not stocking it, uh, but a lot of people are talking about it. We've had messages saying, what do you think about it? Yeah. So, actually, it's something we're going to be doing on the Wizard product review. We, we pride ourselves in sort of keeping the format sort of a vig original and fresh and giving you guys a reason to watch. So we're not just going to review the same old stuff that everybody's reviewing. That's right. And uh, this came to my attention <coughs> when uh, Fair Play, we reviewed Fair Play. Yeah. And we reviewed it a couple of weeks ago. And that was actually on about four or five different review shows at the right. same time. Yeah. I know we That's were the fair. first to kick off and start this sort of thing. But I think... A, a nice way to sort of give regular viewers a treat and give them something unique to look at is feature reviews from other producers yeah, that, that we, we don't actually sell. Correct, but yeah. our position in the review industry means we're very privileged that we get the option to look at these things. That, that's absolutely right. Did I say that and in this, a really long-winded yeah, way? You kind of did. Let's just say that we've got this much. in and yeah. uh, it's it's hot on the scene, literally. It is and, really um, hot. you know, we're going to review it. First thing, uh, this is uh, a creation of uh, Illusionist and Adam Wilbur is the artist behind this. Uh, Adam is a great guy who spent time Very with him creative. in Las Vegas. Uh, what's that other project he had out, actually? And you had, like, you paid for the download and we were watching it and there's some great ideas on there. Oh, uh, The Working Man. The Working there's Man. There's some great material on there. Again, yeah. something else we don't sell, but if you're a worker, that thing with a lottery yeah. ticket, it. He's he got some with awesome material, awesome. Um, unbelievable stuff. And anyway, his creative magic book. Uh, that just came to me there. But uh, <clears throat> Pyro, first thing, you open the box and you go, oh my God. The box this is looks very nice. good. Yeah. And you get it out and it really is a quality piece of equipment. It's all in there as well, which I'm surprised yeah, at. We've been playing it. with it all day. <laughs> and uh, all the equipment is in there. People have given now, quotes. Now, before you see that equipment, though, yeah. you do have an encyclopedia yeah. of, a, well, it's a disclaimer, but if you've ever read Britannica, then you, you're, you're, <laughs> about to, you're about to spend the same time reading this disclaimer. Yeah. I'd hate to see uh, Adam, Adam Wilbur's lawyer bill must be larger than mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's two pages, yeah, isn't it? Say, pages. Basically saying, be careful. Don't be stupid. Don't basically. be stupid with it, because... That's like everything, though, in fairness. This thing shoots fireballs. Correct. And it shoots them bloody well. <laughs> yeah, how, how cool is that, though? Uh, you can utilise it in different sorts of ways. You can uh, strap it onto your wrist, which you've yep. done. We've set up. We've been doing some test footage downstairs. Yeah, Adam does go through, and I would, and, like, and Adam says this on the explanational part, to do that at a later stage once you're used to the gimmick. Yep. Get used to how it works, you know, what kind of the the fireball distance that goes etc all that kind of balance before you put it on your wrist because it, it essentially is a flame thrower yeah it's like a flame <laughs> projector well, yeah. thro thrower gimmick uh, the quality of the gimmick is unbelievable it it reminds me actually of uh, 
I, um, I, do, I don't know what to say, like a vapour or something yeah, like that. It's, when it's you get it out of the of... box, the quality of the manufacturing really is excellent. And it's not been hidden by the producers. It oh. basically looks like a chunky sort of style of yeah. watch yeah. that you wear on your wrist. And that allows for four loads. How yeah. long does it take to load each bit? It, um, not long at all. I mean, you can load the whole... Uh, part up in a minute really once you're used to how you the, the sequence that you load things and how you fold certain items then it's really easy to do but it will take 20 to 30 loads to get used to the um, how much of the certain items you would need to make it effectifiable yeah. it's um, all the, the instruction is all delivered in downloadable form so you need a pretty good uh, internet connection it's not great here and we managed to watch no. all the instructional DVD it goes through it I, I think it's probably an hour and 20 minutes of video in total yeah. something yeah. like that uh, it's very uh, before I forget actually because I know that I mentioned to you that there is stuff underneath the box yeah because you were like oh, I didn't realise that stuff, but it's similar to the pure smoke or, and vapour, basically. You need to take that off and you find the extra bits in there, like your cleaning materials, yeah. extras that... Wristbands, wristbands, holders. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because it comes with a remote as well. <laughs> and I think that's the most exciting thing about this, is the fact that this can be triggered remotely. Yes. And it doesn't have to be limited to something that you wear around your wrist. No, it doesn't. I think, and yeah. Alan covers that. It's very, very cool to go up to people and go like this. <laughs> you wouldn't but, go up to people. Well, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that would be... <laughs> Unless you're getting mugged. Yeah. Say, uh, if you're getting mugged, I'd love to be wearing it. That would be, oh, hey. be a surprise But you somebody. do feel like, you actually do feel like you're not doing magic. You actually feel like you are a superhero of some sort. You actually feel like you're an yeah. X-Man. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, when you wear the toy and you fire something, you feel like... All right, all right. You're, you're invincible. <laughs> all right, John. <laughs> you walk down dark alleys with it and not worry. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, you can fix it on the back of something. I'm actually thinking of putting it on one of my illusion props. So mm. as uh, the big saw is going through their heads, it starts to spark and fireballs come off yeah, it. Yeah. And I've already got, like, a spark uh, thing, r making sparks thing attached to it as well. But Adam the fact that it can be triggered remotely is very very good i like the iphone thing the iphone thing's very good uh, and then you have the and one of the routines i'm sure adam won't mind me saying with the lighter you take the flame off the light and throw it back on yeah it's uh, add on to that uh, popular well, routine. well he, he take, does it that was an idea that uh, suggested by bobby, bobby motta yeah to adam he does the joke thing with taking the lighter off and then the very last time it looks like he throws the lighter invisible lighter flame up in the air but it ends up being a huge fireball yeah. i think time right that would look amazing yeah Taking a picture of somebody with a lighter lit. Yeah. Very clever subtleties with when you take photographs uh, secretly. So you can blow out the flame and as you blow yeah. it out, there's a fireball and then you show them the picture and the light is yeah. not lit. Yeah. Very clever ideas. It's going to be one of those things that if you buy this, you've probably got a use for it. You've probably got an idea of what you want to do. Yeah, it's fair. Uh, if you've got an idea, the prop is certainly not going to disappoint you at all because it's it not is cheap. It's That's not cheap. The only thing I would say it's yeah. not not a cheap item, but it is worth it. I think the the quality of the the, the gimmick itself is. I think they're being very fair yeah, in absolutely. in saying what it is, what you're going to get, so people can make an informed decision. Yeah. If you've got a use for this and you need a prop to do whatever you want it is to do. This prop will not disappoint you because it just delivers on every aspect, especially when you put the time in yeah. and you've researched it. Like Adam says, you've got to do it about 40 times until you get used to exactly how to <coughs> Well, Adam it. must know, well, he knows it inside out, obviously. He's doing it in his living room on Thanksgiving. He's yeah. putting videos up. So, you know, you can control it. It's not, you can have a, f a flame ball that goes... Uh, two feet away or it can go 20 feet away and it, it, uh, and and uh, as well as well we did some tests some scientific did, tests and the test conditions that's right yeah. uh we decided to set something on fire yeah well you challenged it could you set something on fire i said could we set something on fire with it so we Hadn't put they? like a little uh, pile of flash paper yes. down and, and something and, and set something uh, on fire and we set something on fire because well, that's what we do now. when it's yeah. quiet here at world magic shop yeah uh, it's great quality yeah. it's hard to give it a mark because if if you want it and you what? needed this, you, you'd give it 100% because it delivers on every count. I, I've used it. Uh, I'm not sure where in my situation I would use it to perform. 
because it's kind of a theatrical device as yeah. well, really, as opposed to a magic effect itself. But I, I would give it, I would use it in the right situation, so I will give it 92%. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome bit of kit. If you've got a use for it, it will not disappoint you at all. It's not available everywhere. If you look at the YouTube text, you'll find the link at the bottom, because as with everything we review in this category, it's not available everywhere, but you'll find, find it, it right, right down, down there. there. Just click on the link. So, now, another elastic band project, but this one, a little bit more fun. We're smiling, which means this is <laughs> loving, fun. Loving bands. We are loving bands now. We're not hating bands, we're loving bands. Um, Philip and Clement are back uh, from the uh, critically acclaimed Effing Coins DVD and the uh, critically acclaimed uh, lecture, lads, a couple of years ago now, yeah. since the guys were at the uh, lads' convention absolutely stormed it. And they give us a taste of that convention of some of the stuff that they got coming out on this DVD. And we've been waiting for this ever since, haven't we, John? Yeah, two years in the making. So, uh, and I've got the pleasure of um, reviewing it today with David, so I'm so excited. What did you reckon to... How, how did they go about presenting the DVD, Hamid, first of all? How, did you see, how do you synopsisize that? Well, so we put the DVD on... <laughs> And it was like literally in the first few seconds we started laughing, both of us, didn't we? Yeah. It's a trailer. It's a proper trailer. And well, it's, it's a movie, just, isn't it? It's a it? movie. It's an absolute movie. It, it's about, what, 23 minutes long? Yeah. They get, they get in their car and they go off on this journey. And there's, they've spent some money on this. They've got, like, aerial shots and, like, it's almost like a helicopter shot following the car and that. I'm not joking. No. It's some serious really. money's been spent on this. And... I think uh, it's it's Phil who sort of goes to sleep, doesn't he, or yeah. something? He goes to sleep and uh, he starts to hallucinate, and that's when they start dreaming, and uh, they do some elastic band magic along yeah. the way, yeah. and along with a lot of fun and things that are going to make you laugh so much. So much elastic band magic, like you wouldn't think there was that many elastic band tricks out there. No. When the project was coming out, I thought, yeah, they'll probably have like five or six different bits on the DVD. There must be, what, 30, 30 routines on here? 30 different items? Probably more than that. It's, it's crazy. It's like one after another. I don't know how many individual things. Two DVDs, 12 routines. 12 routines, 12 techniques, three routines bonus, making up. So about 24 different things all the way through. But it's crazy because when they say 12 routines, some of these routines are like, you know, multi-phase Multi things yes. happening. Like... It starts off, this. if we just said the titles of the things, the first thing he did was the two bands going into one. Oh. And uh, I had to watch that twice because he was doing it for two girls in bikinis. So good. And uh, two, two bands sort of going into one. There's colour change effects. I love the eject routine, which was the one with the iPhone, that, yeah, that was awesome. where it started on the iPhone screen, it popped off the iPhone screen, then it starts penetrating the iPhone screen. Some really freaky things were happening. Do you remember the one where it rolled up his arm? Yeah, that was brilliant. Jump. Like, he's actually got... It's jump, is it called? Yeah, where he's got the band around his arm. And you just, like, literally see the band just crawling up the arm, like, in a kind of eerie sort of possessed sort it of way. looks so good, though, didn't it? Yeah, and then it crawls back down again. And then you're completely clean, can just take the band off. Really, really did look good. Going back to the um, sort of movie, when we were actually watching Eject, it was quite funny because he took it off the phone, he did the, he did the trick, and then his phone got nicked and then went on a run <laughs> to go and chase his phone. And then in between he stopped and did another magic trick, and that's when he did jump. Yeah, it's, was, you can't really yeah. sum it up, but remember he's, he's having this dream as it's going along, so you can't really sum it up. You have to see it. All I can say is you laugh a lot yeah. while you're watching it, while you see these 12 full routines demonstrated. One of the routines that they did at the lads convention, John, was the F star, 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 where they have a band... And it's kind of like using that band as like a black hole. Yeah. And he's reaching into the band and producing objects like Sharpies. He then puts the Sharpie back in and it disappears. And then at the end, he takes his phone, phone out phone of that. Out. Yeah. And it just is so incredibly visual. It's, it's, it's rubber band magic, but fun. And it makes you want to learn it. It makes you want to go home, put it into your DVD player. And just even if you get a few things... 
few routines, a few moves from the DVD, it's going to heighten your rubber band magic up. Just like I do. Do you do a, a, a broken and restored I rubber do. band? I do. Just yeah. the way they do it with the burnt and restored rubber band, where you actually see it and they get the person with the lighter, and then it's the way that it's done that kind of it's burnt with a lighter, and then as you touch the ends together, you get that little bit that just flies off. That was beautiful. And it looks like it just goes back together. And I do a broken and restored rubber band as a finale to an elastic band thing. I kind of say, oh, this is how it's done. They're special bands. You yeah. know, you can break the bands and you can put them back together. That's how it all works. And I kind of do it at the end. It's so visual now. You know, they're actually special bands. You know, hold the lighter. If you heat them up, they'll melt apart. You can do this in your fingers, but you can just put him back together. But actually creating that more sort of magical focus moment with their version is a lot better. But uh, the one I want to learn straight away, very simple one, might pass people by on the DVD. I forget what it was called. Do you know what it's called, John? Where the band, they hold the fingers here and the band just goes Jones. through the finger. Yeah. It just passes through the finger. I can't, I'll try and find a clip to put it on the screen. But for me, this was so direct. Looks like the band just goes over your finger. They hold your fingers, and it passes straight through. Absolutely but, fantastic. But then other things as well, like flash band. That was awesome. Just to start a routine. Just to start the routine off. Smallest piece of flash paper. Nothing else in your hands. Nothing completely imperceptible. Completely empty. Little piece of flash paper. Flash. And there's so an elastic band. Yeah. Really good. Not that hard to do that no. as well. Not that hard to do looks absolutely incredible but even the color changes that they were doing with the rubber bands i mean you know you see color changes with cards you know then you see changes with coins i've never seen well i well i have seen but the way they've done it the one the around the phone comes brilliant. to my mind yeah. where he wrapped the color band around the phone he just sort of wipes what, it wave, and then yeah. the color changes on the iphone there is so much like on this dvd Triangle, then it yeah, to and you commented on the flourish, didn't you, with the finger? Yeah, I mean, I love that. I mean, even if you do that with normal rubber bands, yeah, in the sense of not the starred one, but normal rubber bands. If you're going into a crazy man's handcuffs routine, I, I think it looks really cool. I think it was an effect many years ago called Stargazer, where you had a normal band, and then you pulled it, and it became yeah. a star at the end. But with the techniques they use... It spins around the finger. Yeah, they kind of change it, morph it. You definitely see a normal band at the start. And then, yeah, he kind of does that move. And it, it kind of morphs as it spins around his finger and goes back into shape. And you get that brilliant illusion. And because everything is so well shot, the colours are so rich, it looks awesome, especially, like you say, the colour changing sort of stuff. It is an inspirational product. I mean, every magician will normally carry rubber bands on them. Yes. I'm sure you do. I, I use rubber bands I in most reception all do. the time, yeah. You know, and I think this has to be one of the best rubber band projects I have ever seen. It makes me want to leave the crazy man's handcuffs, go and learn something different. I mean, I work in a residency. Yeah. So, you know, it would be cool for what me to What sort of restaurant is it? It's a contemporary Indian fine dining restaurant. Right. I'm there all the time. You know, I was just thinking, just... if it was Italian, you could do that thing with the spaghetti, where he stretches the bands, yeah, and then and he, he just snaps, snaps it, the, snaps, snaps it the bits. Brilliant. But it just, it, it, it just, it's just so much material, isn't there? The, the, so, look, it's a double DVD set, 12 routines, 12 techniques, some great startling effects. It's it's inspirational. It want, it makes you want to go home and start getting excited about Rubber Band Man. It's exactly the opposite of band, Bound. It, it really is a fantastic project and we are loving Band. We are really loving it. Um, how much are you gonna give it? I'm gonna give it quite a high percentage. So if we're gonna go on the point of view of if we're gonna perform it in the real world, most definitely, I think I'm gonna give it about 97%. Yeah, there's definitely a couple of things I'm gonna learn for sure. I force myself to learn Infinitum because it's so strong, that link, and you can give the link bands away. There's things on this DVD I will force myself to learn, because it's so strong, so simple and direct, and like you said, you can carry it around all the time. Easy. Um, I'm going to give this, what did you say? 90, I said 97%. I was going to say 90, 99%, actually. So I know there's two things on here. I've had a quick flick through the explanations. I know I want to learn these two things 
straight away and put them into what I do already. And I know it's going to make it stronger. Yeah. Anyway, the ice cream man's here now, so we need to vote. Oh, oh fair enough. A uh, 99, please. 99. <laughs> That's a good mark. That was unexpe unexpected. No, I'm not giving it 99. I'll give, um, it, I'll give it 73%. Okay, 73. I was going to go lower than that this time. I'll go about, I'll go 65. -y. Okay, you having one flake or two. I'll have two if that's all right. Is that a 109? Yeah. Cheers, mate. So next up, we've got uh, real wood. <laughs> real wood. So uh, it actually looks... I don't looks... like you saying that while I'm licking this. <laughs> <laughs> it actually looks quite good. This looks good, doesn't it, Joe? It does, yeah. And oh, it, it first comes and you think, oh, that's going to be rubbish. And actually, you got and you quite like this as well. I, don't I you? thought that when you, when you said it, it was a, it was like a comedy prop and stuff, and it, I can't remember what you said it was to begin with. But you took it out, and I seriously thought that was a block of wood. You it, really thought it was. It re it really does look. Um, it looks a business. Yeah, it does. If you if you're using it on a stage or something like that, you know, rather than a brick thing, what have we got? Oh, stage weight or something. We'll chuck this out into the audience. Yeah, people would think that was a piece of wood from from. Camera yeah, distance exactly. from camera yeah, distance yeah. away, you can. It, look, you can, it looks you can good, see. doesn't it? it? Well, you it threw it. You threw yeah. it to me, didn't yeah. you, on the first day? And I was like, "Whoa, I've got to catch that." Yeah. And it it really does look good. How could you use it? You said throwing it out to choose people. I would imagine that's how they use it. Um, in a way, when I first hold it, because it's solid foam inside, I thought. If they made it hollow foam or more hollow, it would scrunch up to a smaller thing. Yeah. So you could almost get it as a production thing. So it would almost be like an appearing pole coming out of somewhere. You or can, You can you know. even use this as like a mentalist thing. Um, sort of before you use it to choose somebody, you can say, you know, how does magic work? Uh, I understand your perception of reality and I know how to manipulate it. For example, if you look at that right now, because it's decorated like this because it looks like that you assume that this is a piece of wood but in actual fact it's this it's sponge and that's how magic works i'm using your perception yeah. and I'm, I'm manipulating it let's take that a stage further throw this into the audience but it gives you a line of patter to talk about perception and reality yeah and then moving on and actually picking somebody out of the audience mm. it's quite good it looks good you've got to have a use for it but I actually quite like it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's... Can I give it worker of the week? <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to have a use for, You've got to have a use for it, but... I think uh, I'd put it on a table with a, 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 a spade and a brick and say, I'm going to throw one of these at you. Which one am I going to throw? Yeah, that's quite good. And have the sponge yeah. brick and have the, the spade from the missing spade thing. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to chuck one of them at you. Which one am I going to throw? You, you've got to think of a use for it. There's got to be some ideas. But the main thing they're selling is something that's actually sponge, but it looks like a two-before bit of wood. Yeah, And it does. It genuinely does. It's very convincing. It's and one of the most convincing things I've seen in a long time that's made of sponge that's supposed yeah. to be something else and if that was left on your table like that during an act yeah you would think that that was genuinely a block of wood and for that reason i'm giving it 92 percent 99 sean is joining us uh, this week on the sofa Woo! uh sean's a professional magician been uh, doing quite a bit of tv this year as well with a soccer am yeah got a load of sky stuff yeah Bits and bobs. And uh, you're like the resident magician for Paul O'Grady. You okay. do like loads of stuff on that show as well. So uh, can we get it off the sticks, John? We're going to have a look at this. Right, so next up we've got Velocity. You're not used to starting no, here. You don't know no. what to say, do you? <laughs> With um, Rick Smith Jr. He, he was a pitcher at baseball, so his arm is really going for it. Yeah. Um, however, I've been practicing, haven't I? Um, you did say you could do it. I've got How far throw... can you throw it? Do I don't know yet because I've only been doing it in my house. Which is, it isn't that true. Should, should you actually give it a go before we mark it? Right, you ready, Sean? I'm ready. So, try the length of the warehouse. Like, he's actually thrown one already and stuck it in the wall, actually, but can't really see it, but it's, it's there, trust me. Right, go for it. That was, that was terrible. Have you watched this DVD? Go for it. What's going on now? That's better. So you can hit the back wall. Try and get a bit higher. That's better, that's better. Right, do you reckon you can do this? Let's have a go. Right, seriously, are you going to be okay? 
Have you got your protection ready? Right. <laughs> I'd get your head out of the way if I was you. What do you want me to hold it? That'd be fine. Right, okay. Uh, first time. First time. Oh! oh. oh. Second time. Oh, leave sorry. it, leave it. <laughs> 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 Tim Vine's pen behind the ear sketch. Have you seen it? <laughs> You're going to run out of the car? <laughs> more cars, more cars, take it. Oh, yeah. More cars, here you go. Oh, that's the nick in it. Here you go. Here you go. I might need to have a bit of something here. Right. How close do you want to get? But you've got to practice the game. It's fun. I've enjoyed practicing it. I'll give it 50%. Awesome. Thanks to our special guest, Mark Abram. We'll see you next week on the Wizard Product Review. I'll give it 65. 65. Good guys. Awesome. Mm. Oh, that's good. A lot of buzz about this one. Uh, it, uh, it's not John's favourite review, which is coming <laughs> up next. Uh, it's Hidden Hand. Hidden Hand. Uh, by Sean Fields. Uh, so, uh, first of all, we saw the trailer. We did. And we were like, you know, wow. it can't be that good. It looks too amazing and that kind of thing. It was one of those things that as you watch the DVD more and more, you started to think, actually, it's quite good. This is no, good. I had, I had a bit more of a journey than you because I watched the DVD, the trailer, and I went, wow, that's amazing. I want it. Then I opened the box and uh, I, went, I'm too, I went, I've been doing this too long. I went, nah, <laughs> I don't want that. Then I, watched the beginning, <laughs> then, then I watched the beginning of the DVD, and then I went, nah, I don't want that. Then um, I watched it a bit, a bit, bit more, and I went, well, Sean you know, actually you know what, said, I quite like it. Sean says on the DVD, Which Sean, me or this Sean? That Sean. That Sean. That Sean, not, not this Sean. Because they spell Sean. it the same, it's weird, that, isn't it? That Sean says, now, now you've seen what it is, calm down. <laughs> yeah. Because you are kind of like going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I've warmed to it, and I'm like, you know what, this is quite good, I could do it. it, 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 it there's, there's some, there's some because real... it's not a pull, that's the thing. <laughs> it's not a pull. No. Um, it's not invisible thread. No, it's not invisible. Like he says, it's not invisible thread. It's not elastic. It's it's very clear. Well, you've got to be like, you've got to be open-minded. When you see it, it's got exactly the same limitations as most holdouts and most pulls. Mm -hmm. Like a raven, for example. If you know what a raven is, it's got probably the same limitations as that. Would that be fair, John? Yeah, I think so, yeah. But I, I reckon it's probably easier to oh, yeah. hook up, and so to speak, yeah, than a raven. Yeah, yeah. Raven. but yeah. what you can do with it mm -hmm. is cleaner than a yeah. raven. Because with no sleeves, I'm not sure with no sleeves, with angles in the real world for everybody, I'm not so sure. But for camera. But for camera, certainly no sleeves. But... If you've got sleeves, you can take an object, and he uses a ring a lot on the trailer. This could easily be a borrowed ring. Mm -hmm. I don't think that gets across on the trailer as well. He, he doesn't. He yeah. He seems to be using his ring all the time. Yeah. And, and I don't. I don't know why you do that because obviously if you're going to do something, do it with their ring. If you're doing ring to impossible location, you borrow it. Otherwise, they're just getting. Oh, you've got a duplicate ring. Well, I thought that it's, on the it's trailer. It's like doing an ambitious card routine and signing it yourself instead of a spectator <laughs> doing it. And I that's, actually it's... thought that. That's yeah. a schoolboy error, really, yeah. isn't it? Schoolboy error. You've got this great flying ring that I looked at and went, well, that's obviously a duplicate. Ten press-ups for Sean Fields. Any... <laughs> now, come do it, Sean. Go. Faster. <laughs> that's that, that, eight. Nine. <laughs> come on. Ten. He's done again. No, right, right, he's back. Now back to the good bit. Yeah. It's actually real. It's a real... Ring on keychain. It's not a real, though. No. It's not a real. It's no. a real. R E A L, not R E E L. All right. It's 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 a real, not real. Yeah, I weren't saying. I was saying that, <laughs> but I weren't. It, it was. It's really the ring. It's really the ring. It's yeah. really the but ring. It's not a real. 
his ring. <laughs> yeah. But it should have been a spectator's, the spectator's ring. Real because ring. with this, you can literally go like that. Yeah. Go down to your back pocket, and, and it's, it's a really, it's like it's really something I've, I've worked on before, actually. But it's like it's you, did normally you this? on the ring. I didn't. Did you, did you invent I this? invented this. <laughs> it's different. No, he shows you how to prepare, and make a very nice version of flying ring. Yeah. He also shows you how to do like a version of very similar to like the regal ring chain. Yeah. Where he just goes straight to his back, and there's the ring. There. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Really Coin in sugar packet. That's the, my favourite. My favourite um, like effect on it. What's well, the coin and sugar packet? Because it's so direct. Borrow a coin, sign the coin. Sign coin. Everybody's gonna go. Oh, you're gonna bend that now, aren't you? You're at a restaurant. Oh, you had a coin bend. Didn't yeah, you? he did a coin bend as well. But the most direct thing. Rubbish. Borrow a coin, sign it. Don't instantly, get the coin bend. The vanish is so clean. Yeah. And then um, needs to be signed. Then it you know appears in, in the packet. Um, and happening. <laughs> and happening in their hands, coin bend. Yeah, it's real magic. No, that's nobody's real magic. Nobody's invented a coin bend. We can sign it, have they? So that'd be like a dream. That'd be like having a clear box that you tipped a card out and it just <laughs> like was completely clear. That'd you can't like do that. You dream. can't do All that. All at fingertips. All at fingertips. Can't be done. Right, come on, let's get back to this. God, the day um, I see right. the day I see that trailer, then I'll get excited. Mm. Right, right. So, uh, so anyway, <laughs> you can do some cool stuff with it. It's better than we thought it was going to be. I'd probably use this at some point. I know I'll pro if I if I'm doing a, especially to camera. If I've got to yeah, do it at some stings. point, a clean a clean vanish to camera. It's ideal. It's like you said, like Kevin James Van when he does the on H T, yeah, which Doug Henning sort of used to do all the time, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But it's like a modern version of the vanishing nickel. You can do that with it. Yeah. Um, a little bit extra gets added to the hidden hand gimmick, so you can use it with coins other than with rings, because with rings it will work just straight away. You have to add this extra bit of gimmick, which mm -hmm. you get with it, of yep. course, to add to it. You, you've got like a minute, two minute setup, and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And it is pretty invisible. If you just stood there still, maybe somebody might go, hang on, I can see something there. But if you're just moving your hand in a normal way, people would not see a thing and it looks amazing obviously the the video uh, that you get with it the dvd is very beautifully shot eric joins uh, joins eric jones joins sean on the dvd eric jones, not that sean, sean this sean that sean yeah on the dvd and uh, they both talk about it eric's got some ideas coin in pen cap and mainly because the main strong point about the hidden hand is that you can do with a superb hand? vanish and it's just gone where he ends up doing like what looks like a normal false transfer well, why, which why could would, just be a false transfer why would you do a retention type vanish if you didn't have to the whole point is still looks good yeah, still coin looks in pen cap still looks okay mm. but the best uses are explained by sean there's some really direct applications if you've never messed around with things like this before i think you might like it a lot and certainly for camera and that kind of thing, it's superb. It's probably the cleanest coin vanish of its kind since the vanishing nickel. Yeah. Because you don't actually use another hand. And for camera, yeah. that moment is amazing. It's magic. What are you going to give it? 94%. Yeah, I'm definitely going to use it 94%. <laughs> Let's talk about this. It's called Puzzle It Out. And yep. I, I like this sort of thing. Uh, it's kind of like a, a wooden box. Inside, it, there's a, a round peg with a sort of uh, convexed sort of top to it. The idea is you give it to somebody and they drop that in there and you tell them that they can't invert this. They can't just take, take it out and shake it out. They can't move it up and down or anything like that to create any sort of, in, sort of inertia. You've got to just hold this dead still you can't use anything else like a paper clip or anything. Right. You can only use your body, but you've got to be able to get that out of there and lift that out of there only using your body, but you can't tip it out, can't stick anything in there. What you do, you, you blow on it. It's not expensive, this thing as well. You blow on it and somehow the air goes around it and lifts it up. So you blow on it, try not to spit, and then you just catch it. Here we go. <laughs> not very good. If you do you. it properly, sometimes it, it can fly out and you actually get you catch right it. in the eye. I, <laughs> there we that go. That was better. That was better. No, I, 
I've I've got a proposition for you. Right. Without using the method in the instruction, just using my hands. Yeah. Right. There it is. I I bet. <laughs> yeah. Five pounds, I can take it out. Just with your fingers. Just with my fingers. Okay. No, you can't. All right. Go on, have a get. Awesome. What the? Wow. How did you do that? I've been trying to do that all the time. Years of, I mean, I got one of these when I was a kid. Look. That's Flies awesome. Out like that, yeah. That's so really good. That is. Your fingers. There we go. Gotta get, gotta get your grip. That's what? Can I try? There's no way, man. No way. Right. We better do another review. We're doing that one next week. What's that? The um, the anti gravity gel. Yeah, we'll do yeah, that, I'll that do next that week. Next week. Right. Okay. Let's do another one. Capsule. Absolutely, Capsule. By Sans Mines, it's uh, the second Sans Mines product of the week and probably the 15th in the last month. It and, is. Um, Sounds like a treatment for piles. <laughs> 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 have, you got any, have you got any cream to rub on my capsules? <laughs> <laughs> I've got capsules again, Mum. <laughs> yeah, got any steroid cream for it. I'm talking about steroids. He, on yeah, steroids. <laughs> I'm talking he, about he steroids. Sat, he, <laughs> you're talking about steroid creams from when you pile. Okay, right, I was wondering how we got onto I'm that. I'm talking yeah. about steroids. Chris from Sam's mind sounds like he's on steroids. But don't be <laughs> Don't be Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he just has a few tic tacs. And but he, don't be put off by him being on the front cover. His voice isn't on it, it's presented by somebody else. <laughs> You um, know what? There uh, are going to be people out there that look at the fact that he's not on the DVD as a selling point. <laughs> they really will. But anyway, moving on. Oracle by Titana. Okay, shall we? We're going to do it. Right, this could be a, a new pack of cards um, straight from the shop. Yes. Um, Mr. Spectator, if you could give them a good shuffle for me, please. Right, okay. Um, There's no advertising cards, is there? No. Just don't um, think of, um, don't go for a picture card, because there's only 12 of them in the pack, so it'd be quite obvious, quite easy for me to try and guess which one it was. Got it. Just think of um, any playing card, go through the deck, and then um, take it out of the pack. Um, obviously, don't have the cards pointed at oh, me, yeah. I can see them, <laughs> so it makes the end a bit disappointing. Take it out. Take it out, obviously remember it, put it somewhere I can't see it. Um, maybe, oh yeah, that Got it. do. Right, um, I am now just going to, bro, if you actually take the cards for yeah. me, and if you... Um, then I shuffle them. You can give him a shuffle. Yeah, time. I thought I did. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no more prompts. Okay, if you have your cut, um, cut the deck into uh, just three three parts. I've got a third of the pack there, and uh, that'll I'll be perfect. Three and piles. Ken, if you could just go in here and pick, pick one of the piles up, um, and um, give them a shuffle. And David, you can give another pile a shuffle. Right. Perfect. Don't get too excited there. Only two piles get shuffled. Right. The, yeah, yeah, put, put them back. Um, I'm just going to um, spread these out. And um, this next pile as well, so you can see them all. My head's hurting. Okay. Right, and... Um, um, what I'm going to do is, um, if, um, you, <laughs> this is how my head, I can't think, I can't, if you, me, if you ask me to spell my name now, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, I, I actually, the blood has gone through my head and I can't think, don't, don't look at me, Ken, don't look at me. Right, I'm going to remove two of the piles and, um. Hopefully, I mean, oh, by the, the premise of this whole trick is we're going to find your mate, so your mate's meant to be with you. Um, Ken, that's you tonight. Right, mate. Um, Ken's my mate. Yeah, yeah that'll right. do. Your mate, mate, All that'll right. do. Um, how long have you two known each other for? Uh, about three minutes. About, <laughs> about, about three minutes. Um, longer Ken, than most of my relationships. What are going to ask you to do? Longer than most of your relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Intimate ones? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so, Ken, what I'm going to ask you to do is um, just take, take a card out of the pack for me, please. Okay. Perfect. Um, and. Um, I don't know if this has worked or not. <laughs> um, but you two have known each other for a very long time. You've yes, both picked yeah. a card each out of the pack. Let's see what you've both got. David, you have got the... Go. He's got the five of spades. Oh, he's, he's got, got the... Heart. Five of spades! <laughs> <heart. laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> 
That's it. We drew straws before the show. And that's Who was going to do it? And that's the end of this week's Wizard Pod of Review. I'm sure that's day. <laughs> you actually, credit to him, seriously, we said one of us was going to do it. We flipped a coin. Yes. And it ended up being And I used. lost. Next, I've got Blamo's favourite trick. In stick. That's right. The rough in stick. <laughs> oh, you want it now, don't you? Should we do that again? Or are we, yeah. leave, are we leaving that in? I don't no, we'll do it, it again. Do it again. It's got to be quicker. It's not rough. his fault. So here we go. The moment you've all been waiting for. The trick that fooled Peter Eggink and Mark Shortland. And I'll tell you a little story about this. Go on. Mark Shortland came round my house two days ago and was fooled by a trick. And he's Mark's never fooled by tricks. You know, he's watched all the Penn and Teller episodes. Yeah. He wasn't fooled by any of them, even the ones that fooled Penn and Teller. Now, I've got a little girl. Her name's Ebony. She's seven years old, and she came to the magic shop. Yeah. And she chose any trick within her budget <laughs> that she could have, right? And she took it home. She practised it, and she showed it Mark. And he's got no idea how it's done. No idea. Neither did Peter Egging. Neither did Peter Egging. And well, he we showed him at Leamington Convention. But we haven't got any of these, have we? So if they're on order, we're get we're getting them. But you're but desperate to do it's, this. It's um. Can we have a drum roll as we reveal what this trick is? Can have a drum roll, please. Drum roll up, everybody. Do you need it off the sticks? Not yet. He well, can't see it. Get it off the sticks, John. For the big close up. Keep the drum roll going over there. Here it is. The trick the full Mark Shortland and Peter Egging. Awesome. It's that mummy prediction trick. It's awesome. It does, but he pulled, like, you demmed this once at Leamington, <laughs> didn't you? And all of a sudden we sold out. Uh, yeah, 10, 15 people just bought it. So in. what happens is... Nobody could work it out. In my head, you know that trick with the, the dice, with the different coloured dice, and you put it in a box and you tell them what no, colour's no, on top? No, no, don't reveal any secrets. No, no, but, but you yeah. tell them. Yeah. Keep it right. So... It's a, from an audience point of view, it's as good as that. This, I think <laughs> it is. Think about it. It's I the wouldn't same go trick. that far. Look. It's the same trick. And mummy goes in the box whilst your back's turned. You turn back and you tell them which mummy it is. And you can put any. You can, you can say, oh, because you're left-handed, I think that you think with the right side of your brain and therefore you put the left one right. <laughs> you can do all that mumbo-jumbo with it. It's exactly the same. Because they can examine this they, to their heart's content. They can. Can't they? they can. And guess what? What do you want me to do? Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I'll, I'll turn my back. Put... One of the mummies in there, put the lid on, and then put the, put the mummies back in your pocket so I don't know, you know, obviously don't know which mummies in the box. Right. And then let me know when you've done it. Okay. Have you done it? Yes. Are you happy? Yeah. Does this trick always make you happy? Right, here we go. Do you want to tell me something about my personality I, well, or anything I think, like that? I think <laughs> that because of the way the way that your left leg's sticking out there. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah it means you like wearing. <laughs> it means it reveals to me that you like wearing ladies' underwear yeah. on Saturday my nights. God. How do you know that? I know, which must mean that that the mummy in there is black. It is. Is it black? It is black. Let's try to show the camera. Right, I will do it. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. And. Bef Whilst you're doing this, let you me just... You can't see through this as well. They can hold it up to the light. They'll never find anything, And not only they? that, not only that, the Peter batteries... Find the batteries will never run out. <laughs> the batteries Lifetime <laughs> guarantee, the batteries will never run out. Right, OK. Right, I'll turn it back. I'll do it again. Anyone you want. You can put the same colour in to try and trick me if you want. Or you can put a different one in. Well, let I've me know when you put in now. the other two mummies as well. Have you done it? Yeah. Are the mummies hidden? Yes. Perfect. Now, name a number between one and ten. Four. Four. You know what that means, don't you? <laughs> that means... <laughs> Come on. That means that you wear grey socks. Yes. Oh, you do? Yeah. Do you know what that means? What? That means that the mummy in there is grey. It is grey. It is grey. <laughs> do more, it again, do more. it again. Do it again. And I'm going to keep doing it till you look like you're enjoying yourself, okay. all right? Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Any, any one you want. You can put the same one, you can put a different one in. Maybe you'll think, oh, he knows I'm going to put white in because I put black and grey in, so maybe you're going to trick me by not putting it in. Or, or who knows? Let me know when you've done it. OK. Can I look back? Yeah. Perfect. Now, Glamo's <laughs> white, and so there's too much white around. There's, um, You're a natural Yeah, this. so I'm, I'm imagining that with a personality of your type... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that... The mummy in there is black. It is. And you can, you can, the thing is with this. It's completely examinable. 
John, I, I have got a confession to, to make as well. Well, John showed me this quite a few times before I worked it out. I worked it out in the end, but it was a long time. He was in the office showing me this. It took me a long time. And you're the British champion of magic. Once, yeah, yeah. once. Uh, but a long time ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can examine everything. You can examine the mummies. There's nothing to find. There really is. That. I mean, I was clever. in Sainsbury's once and somebody tried to examine my mummy. <laughs> yeah. It didn't end very well. <laughs> right. How much are you going to give it? 90%. Oh. It's brilliant. It fools people. It fooled Mark Shaw and Peter Edding and David Penoff of Britain's Got Talent. It <laughs> fooled you all. <laughs> but yeah. we haven't got any. And anybody can so do it. So don't order it just yet. <laughs> we'll do a mail. Should we do a mail out? You can pre-order it. In. You're getting it in. Pre-order it. Pre-order it. You're getting it in. <laughs> pre-order yours today while pre stock, it. before stocks run out. This is amazing. My little girl can do it. Full, full people ready. It's wicked. You've already got in people on the cafe saying this is more like bid up TV. The well, magic review show. Now you're saying pre order today. You know going to do that on BGT. It's, and say lifetime guarantee on the batteries. <laughs> What are you giving it? Yeah. It fooled you. You said it fooled you. Yeah, but, but I'm not going to use it. I'm you can't get 2%. It. But you can't, look at the state of it, though. You'd be embarrassed <laughs> to get that out again. You could do this if you were booked to do, like, an Egyptian-themed event or did, like, an Egyptian <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> right. You could dress up dressed as a pharaoh, right? Or Cleopatra, if you're a female magician, right? And then you could... This could, this could get you the next book in. This is a deal clincher. <laughs> Brilliant. Actually, I didn't, I didn't think that, yeah. Yeah. Not 94%. 94%. It's 12 o'clock on a Wednesday and this is the Wisdom Product Review. I'm Dave. And I'm Sean. Wishbone. I've got a prediction that magicians are going to buy this trick and they're going to go, oh, when they open the box because... Because, do you know what, I'll tell you what it is, because they're not thinking about how powerful the piece of magic is, they're disappointed with the thing that makes it magic from their point of view. Yeah. What they're forgetting about is how powerful the effect is on the spectator, because the magic happens in the mind of the spectator, not actually in what the, how, what the magician thinks about the special thing. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, if you can convince people that this is an impromptu effect... You, you can't almost do this as part of a show. Like here today, it doesn't work you, as well as when you, we went out and did it earlier. You can't put your sponge balls away and then go, and now, ladies and gentlemen, after my silver case, I have um, two little sticks. Yeah. If you, it's like, um, oh, Wayne, Wayne, you need to credit me again. The example that I gave you before about the burger thing. The burger? Yeah, they're, they're walking down the road and you make a burger. Somebody said, I'm really Somebody hungry. said, a in, a lecture, in a lecture. In a lecture. Guy Vernon. No, 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 no. David Roth. David Roth. David it's, Roth that it's that sort of moment. David Roth said, a real piece of magic would be that you're walking down the road. Somebody says to you, I'm really hungry and um, I, I really fancy a beef burger. And you go, bam, you make a beef burger and you give it to them. And it's the same sort of thing. If you're in a coffee shop or you're, if you're in a bar environment where they've got the sticks around and somebody... Um, so, you know, somebody says, do a trick, and you're like, oh, I haven't really got anything on me. Let um, me just go and get some sticks. Let me just sticks. go and get some sticks. And now you've got an impromptu, wow, a wow moment. I mean, you did it to some, to some staff that worked at Costa. That Costa thought, Coffee. This is really good. The skill in this is not handling the props because it's made so well, and you get enough to do sort of over 30 performances. The skill in this is not the moves. The skill is you as a performer making this look impromptu. If you can make this look impromptu, you're a good enough actor to convince them that you've just grabbed a couple of sticks, you have got an absolute miracle on your hands. I know, because this thing is like a drug to me right now. I'm like, I couldn't, couldn't wait to go and do this again, and I've done this time and time again today, just people <coughs> in the shop, uh, first of all, out for dinner, then we went to the Costa Coffee Shop to do it again. Brilliant. And it's a trick that I actually enjoy performing because it's such a pleasure to perform because there's no pressure on you. Anybody <laughs> could. It does it for you. Anybody it can do the moves. You, yeah. But because of how impromptu and innocent the props look, 
you create a real moment of astonishment. And I think that's fair to say from obviously Paul Harris's company. The you get a download, no DVD. Bro Hil Gilbert takes you through the basic handling, which is what I did. The advanced handling, got to tell you, doesn't add anything at all. It might just keep <laughs> move monkeys happy. But if you just want to do a really direct presentation, you don't need to bother with an advanced handling. You just do the basic handling and you just kill with this thing. The effect's still the same. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's brilliant. It's really, really good. It, I think it's the best thing Paul Harris has brought out in a very, very, very long time. I don't think there's been some... I didn't like the waterworks thing. Uh, this one has completely gone under the radar as far as I'm concerned. I've not heard any buzz about this. I've heard nothing about it. Literally saw this box and was like, oh, is that a Paul Harris effect? Got it out to review it. This thing's incredible. I believe this is the best thing that Paul Harris has brought out. I can't wait to go out and perform it again. So the next project um, uh, is a, a magic prank by David Bonfandini. And uh, it's sharp this, and uh, it's a gimmick that you can switch in, switch out, and use for, I think it's quite a good prank. Creating good, havoc. Uh, yeah, can we, uh, can we get it off, off the, the sticks, sticks, John? Um, can we demonstrate this? Ken. We've just in the middle of our favourite sign card routine, and whilst we're doing that, Ken, could I borrow your arm? Yes, which one? Any with your rolled up sleeve, let's go with this one. Just to make sure that the pen works before we sign the card. We've never met, have we? <gasps> oh, sorry about that, Ken. Wow. I'm sorry about that. Perfect. Right. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's it. Justice. It's a, it's a magic prank. It's just a little bit of business, isn't it, David? It is a little bit. I think this would be great for a kid at a wedding, you know, um, just there, and then you rub like that. Don't do that, David. Sorry. Sure. Do you know, so let me just say, you're going up to a kid at a wedding and you're going like that. Yeah. yeah. And then, I always and do now, that. I mean, where do you do your weddings? Well, we did, well, we've got another review to talk about very you soon. You know, Matthew Garrett did have a... Box? He had a... Matthew, put Surprise it away. Surprise review. But Matthew, yeah. Matthew We're going to get it out in a moment. He did have a great idea with this, and that's I switched in for a real Sharpie, and we sort of went across here and went like that. That with, better not be on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <In there. laughs> <laughs> and you said I wouldn't do it, Matthew. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's <joking. laughs> <laughs> It felt like it as well. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> How much are you going to give it? There's not much hey, to review, review it? Look, it's a funny bit of business. You talk in your lecture about beating people up with magic. And when, when somebody's doing something, shuffling the cards over there, yeah. you should be doing something over here to keep them interested. This is a great bit of business that's going to help you do that. Why not have one in your pocket? I think if you did this on like, a, you know when the kid's got all Don't his do best it on clothes their legs, on? Though. Got his best clothes on, no, his, his white shirt sleeve, yeah. they have the waistcoat on. And the, the mum's going to go, ah! Yeah, it's, and the kid's really going to react to that. Yeah. I, th I think for a kid at a wedding, I have a specific set that I do for like, you know, the table where all the adults gather around and you do a bit for like the four kids. And it's always that bit that kind of gets you rebooked. Yeah, because the kids love people, you. You convince the, convince the grown-ups that you're a nice guy when you do the stuff for the kids. Yeah. And uh, I think as a bit of business, they've signed the card, you put it in your pocket momentarily, come out and go, actually, did that come out? Let me just, oh yeah, it is working. Yeah, you can just rub it. I think you get a great natural reaction. It would work really well. I really like it. I'm going to get one of these. I want to try it. I'm giving this 94%. Yeah, snap. 94%. Do the audience like it? Yeah. yeah. We like it. Everybody likes it. They all played with it. Well done. Good review. Could you take a card? There we go. Check it out. The rain is coming down here. It's incredible. And uh, can you sign your name on that card as well? And uh, I'm going to mark that card myself. Uh, I'm going to mark it in a slightly different way. Uh, I'm going to put a cross on the back of the card just here. Can you see that, John? That's now a marked card. Can you see that? Yeah. Now, if you watch, watch the cross on the card. If I click, see, it actually jumps. Ooh, can I hear an ooh from the crowd? Now I'm just going to blow. Ooh. And the last bit, if you watch the cross, jumps off. And if you check, look, that's permanent. And the card 
can be completely examined. Oh, first time! First time! First of all, what do we think to that as an audience? Yeah. Now, you get two gaff cards with this. You get uh, a red one and you get a blue one. The blue one looks slightly better, slightly more deceptive, wouldn't we agree? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you were to do this under harsh white lighting, like we've got here, it might not look as good. If you did it in normal bar lighting, you're absolutely fine, but with the blue cards, you can't see anything at all. It's very similar in design to Michael Chatelain's whole matrix. Would mm -hmm. that be fair to say? Absolutely fair A similar to say. sort of design of thing. The card works itself, the gimmick card. I was telling the guys here that when I got it, and got it out, it was in a clear plastic wallet like this, and uh, I kind of got the card out, it was exactly this <laughs> yeah. wallet, and I, I was actually watching the magic like happen before my eyes. It was absolutely incredible, it was just happening. It kind of works itself. All you need to do to make the routine work is a DL. That's all you need to do, that's the only slight you need. The card is not forced at all. It's quite easy to do, it just works itself. We really like this, don't we? This is the best product that I, well, one of the, in the top two best products I've reviewed on the Wizard Product Review. Certainly one of the best gaff yeah. cards I've seen in a very long time. It reminds me of the Predi Change trick, but I actually think this is more magical. I did it like this with the cross because I thought you got that nice retention of vision where it jumps onto your hand like this. And this is not even an indelible pen, it's just a white clean pen that I used like this. So you could wipe it off if you wanted to. Uh, on the video, the, uh, the creator, uh, he actually uh, moves it across with his thumb at the end and then reveals it under his thumb. But I actually do prefer the nice retention of vision, because it was, uh, you actually said, didn't you, y your eyes, you, can see it, yeah. you, you think you can mm. actually see it go across. And even though it essentially only appears in one, uh, disappears in one place and appears in another, you do feel like you see it in one complete line move across. The illusion is absolutely perfect. We love this. We're giving it work of the week. Absolutely work of the week. It's getting work of the wild. week. If you order this this week by 12 o'clock on uh, Friday midnight from worldmagicshop.com, you will get a copy of the excellent Torn Twisted Restored by Stephen Leithwaite, which is another fantastic effect. You get that for free if you order this this week, only from World Magic Shop. Dot com. That's it this week for the Wizard product review. We've had some pretty good products. David, calm down. Hold yours. I've what? not given my, my percentage yet. And there was Dave. No, it's Dave. <laughs> what are you going to give it? I, I thought that was it. I thought no, we were just gonna, like... You're, 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 you're sorry, I'm give excited. It 1%? I'm excited. I'm giving, it, to a big climax. I'm giving it 95%. Don't Ooh. climax too early, Spat David. On <laughs> sorry. Too far too early. Got a 95%. Next week, next week we're doing that review. Next week we're doing the big climax review. How much are you giving it? Um, 96%. Of, for me, it's going straight into my set. Do the audience like it? Yeah. Everybody here saw the gimmick. What do you think? Yeah. 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 Good one. Applause for the gimmick. We're impressed. Yeah. We've, now, uh, we've, take, we've now found the good angle to do 52. it. 52! <laughs> right, you ready? Here we go. Ooh. <laughs> There's the traditional Mark Shortland heckle that we normally have <laughs> during every show. Ooh. And nothing here, and nothing here. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> We're not sure. We haven't reviewed that footage. There are probably points where it just suddenly gets a bit of white noise on the screen at certain times just to cover just it. Just pixelate it. Yeah, yeah, just Gonzo then. So what is Gonzo? Gonzo's a holdout, and when you open it out, and get the bits out, it looks like an exciting bit of kit. And it looks really it well made you, as well. Yeah, it is. Really well made. It is very, very well made. There is no doubt that this is fun to play with. Yeah. But you're going to say something about that right now, aren't you? I'm going to say that the this this makes it possible for you to make the coin appear and vanish. Yeah. Right? But I think the vanish is much stronger. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think the raven that was brought out years and years ago is actually a better, cleaner, more angle-proof vanish than Gonzo. But he does say, uh, Jose, on the DVD, and it takes about 20 minutes to set it up the first time you use it. Mm -hmm. Then, 
after that initial 20 minutes of that first setup, and I've got to t say, Jose's teaching on the DVD, second to none, very, very well produced instructional uh, DVD that came with it. After 20 minutes, you start getting it and you start to think, actually, it's kind of looking okay now. Mm -hmm. After about an hour, it starts to look a little bit better. But one of his main selling points that goes against the Raven is that people can check your hands That's at the right. start. So people can check your hands, check that there's nothing on there. And I think from a marketing perspective, he's probably thinking a little bit about the Raven when he's, you know, mentioning that as a selling point Absolutely. of Gonzo. Absolutely. Uh, you wouldn't be able to use it at tables, would you? You couldn't use it at tables. You couldn't use it walk around. Well, that's where he says you use it. He says you use it walk around. He says as long as people are looking down on it in your hands, do you think that's right? What would you reckon? Do you think that's right? I think we all look down on it, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> looking down on it, yeah. Um, you can, you, even if you're looking down on it, the angles are very angly. You can see, I, I know you've only been practising it for, a, 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 like, I don't know, since lunchtime or whatever, yeah. right? However, you had to do it several times then for, for the for A the couple camera. of times, yeah. But that was because the first time was at like an awkward angle. But even though you were... An, even though I've you been practising one way all day and then I was, John even made me do it Even though you were at an awkward angle, I think the audience, even the audience that were tight in on, on the camera, probably even the cameraman himself, was seeing flashes. I don't know. We don't know. I... We might have to review this footage and check it out later. But there's a couple of different methods of routining that go with it. 50% sort of sleight of hand, 50% mechanical. But there is also a setup, which I didn't show these guys, which is completely mechanical. Right. Where you're hooked up even more, to be fair, and you have to have your arm a bit closer to your body. After you've done the vanish, you move away from your body and then show ah. both hands. And in the action of moving away from your body, the whole thing cleans up considerably. Personally, I didn't want to even bother setting that up because you're just too much Absolutely. hooked up, really. The other thing is, you're saying about making the coin appear and vanish in this sort of very yep. clean way, which is very similar to uh, the appearing nickel and vanishing nickel. The vanishing nickel, which I know you said earlier you prefer. So if we said Raven or Gonzo, what do you prefer? Um, Raven or vanishing nickel. But if I, had to, if I was something I was spending money on, it'd be Raven. And what, what do the audience think? Do they think the Raven is better than this or the Gonzo is better? A lot of people seem to think that the Raven is better. I did enjoy playing with the gimmick, but I don't think I would ever use it at a paid gig. The main thing, uh, the main reason for that is after you've had it on for about an hour, it starts to feel pretty uncomfortable. But I think if you were going to use it in a Sting or a YouTube video or a viral video or something like that, it might be some use to you. But at 70 quid, I probably doubt it. Fun to play with, though. Very well-made gimmick. Great instructional DVD. Not a bad product by any means. It's just whether you get some use out of it. I don't think I would. Still good, though. 69%. 68%. So a lot of people talking about this, Obliterate from Fox Magic uh, Products, Wayne Fox, Wayne Fox, and uh, I put this on my Facebook page because I had a sneak preview of this just before Blackpool, but after producing an eight ball, you uh, literally get the people to focus on it and say, wouldn't it be good if I could put the eight ball back in the box, and you squeeze, and then the eight ball actually visually squashes in front of them. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can do it like that at the fingertips. There's also another very nice handling. We'll put some clips on the screen where you go like this yeah. and actually squash it visually as well at your fingertips. A lot of people pick this up. I think by the end of the second day, Wayne was completely sold out. A lot of top pros bought this. This is Obliterate. I think this this year is probably the trick of the Magic Convention. It's a very visual thing. And when you say put it back in the card box, it would be a production of a full eight ball from a card box or something. And then this would be, you know, to put it back in or something. And like Wayne's that. got an extra bit. It doesn't come with a DVD. It comes with downloadable instructions. You can scan the QR code, go to his website. The whole video is hosted on his website. Uh, but... Um, Wayne's got an extra bit as well, which I want to sort of mention, which is really nice. I saw him do this in a lecture, and he fooled me with it, fooled Lee Smith with it as well at the same time, where he puts the, uh, the flattened eight ball, the obliterate ball, in the pack, uh, in the empty box at the end, and then he picks the deck up, 
and he puts the deck in halfway and he says the only trouble is you can't put the deck in the rest of the way and then he pushes and then the deck goes in as well and it's like the ball has gone back into the deck at the end the prop itself is very nicely it's made very nice. isn't it you had a prototype before uh, and you were doing it before the convention, and then this one is even nicer because this is the real. This is the real thing. Uh, yeah, I'm actually on the DVD doing some bits with the top it that I did years ago, where I slap an eight ball and flatten it. Uh, now using the obliterate ball, this just goes to a whole new level. But we do really like the visual squash of the ball, and you only need to see the reactions of the trailer to know that this is a working effect, and you only need to see the reaction that it's got from the audience at the Blackpool Magic Convention to know that this, I believe, is the trick of the convention this year. Everybody in agreement with that? Yeah! Everybody is in agreement that this is the trick of the convention. Thank you very much to all the audience for joining us this time. We'll be back in two weeks' time on a Wednesday at 12 o'clock. I'm Dave. And I'm Sean. We'll see you next time on the Wither Product Review. Thanks very much for joining us, Tom. That's it for the Wizard Product Review. Yeah. I don't know. I thought, I thought oh, is that it? We're I'm Dave. That. I'm Tom. See you next week. <laughs> Good boy. Biscuit now. Oh, I should have. It's not even dog biscuit, isn't it? Can be what you select. Any card. Rip it, touch it, drop the crease, then reconnect. Any option from these cards can be what you select. Rip it, touch it, drop the crease, then reconnect. Yeah.